So today I'm going to talk about a stock uh, that is absolutely smashing at the moment. It's doing very well, but even if you don't own this stock, I want to talk about a stock because it has a lot of lessons in it. And I'm not just talking one lesson, there's been multiple lessons from this stock and knowing these lessons will make you a better investor. And it's examples of what kind of goes on in the market behind the scenes and sometimes some crazy and stupid things that go on the stock market and you've just got to ignore them things. And it's crazy to think these things do happen. So uh, we're going to identify them that uh, that has been happening, and then also we're going to mention a couple of Chinese stocks, and uh, we're going to mention uh, Disney a little bit towards the end of the video. But we'll get started. So this stock is Card Factory. So I've been in this stock for around about three years now, and I am up over I think 150 percent on this stock. So this has been a very good performer for me. And also we've got to say that this is is in a in a bear market. I mean, obviously we're a little bit out of the bear market right now but you know we've had a lot of stocks down massively we've had a, you know slumped valuations and uh, even this stock here that is where we've had like an energy crisis in the UK in a recessionary environment in fact this company's actually benefited from that situation because it has cheaper products everyone's kind of rotated to the cheaper products uh, or the cheaper cards in card factories case and it, and it's done really well from that point of view so um, even in this environment it's actually uh, really benefited from it so uh, yeah I'm up over 150% on this stock and um, first of all I just want to use an example here of a, a share price and how much a share price can kind of change perspectives on things here so Originally, the stock was down and trending before the CV situation. A little bit of a mismanaged company before the CV situation, but there was some good things starting to come in in 2019. There was a little bit of indication of the turnaround play coming in. And the actual CV situation helped it because one of the big things that was hurting card factories, it was paying a dividend that wasn't really sustainable and it needed a reason to cut it. Uh, obviously the CV situation was a good idea to cut it. And then from the CV situation, it was able to benefit from um, improving its online business, uh, which gave it another good income stream, and also it cut its dividend and it was able to pay its debt down, which was going up and up and up, and that benefit really helped it, as well as uh, a lot of the turnaround plays that it was already putting in 2019. And then during 2020, I started buying this stock and I was like, okay, I actually remember at the time I said this is in high risk stock like I'm buying this and it's high risk because it's a turnaround play it is debt heavy there's the risk that if the CV situation gets worse and the stores are closed for a year two years that the stock could uh, go under I, I remember saying that at the time and I never really put that much capital in at the time but the stock went up uh, as the we came out of the CV, CV situation people realized it wasn't as bad as what was first for and the in business for card factory was improving you, you saw them opening the shops you saw them able to pay down some of the debt you were seeing profitability come back revenue was doing very well so everything was looking good in the stock at the time there, and it was a bit like, well, yep, yeah, uh, you know, I, I was high risk, I had a good position size on what was there, I'm, I'm happy where it's at. Now the crazy thing is that, because in 2022, everything absolutely collapsed in the stock market, Car Factory was one of those stocks that collapsed. Even though the stock was financially in one of the best places it's been for many years, what happened? The share price went from you know 93p and it just went lower and lower and it was down you know 50% at, the, at some points the stock was down 50% from that time and you you were in the middle of 2022 with a stock down 50% and you're like hold on we're in 2022 but you're looking at the, what's going on inside the company they're bringing out trading updates where the revenue is doing very well the you know the revenue is getting close to where it was before the CV situation is back making good amounts of profit the de debt's being paid down it doesn't make sense for the share price be down 50%. And that's what happened. That's what happens in the stock market. There's so many times where the actual business and the share price are not correct in correlation with each other. There's times where the share price is way higher than what the company should be worth. There's times where the, the share price will be lower than what the company's worth. And you've got to realize that. And you're up, you as an investor have to realize, okay, that's a big premium for that company. Do I sell that company or do I still hold it? Oh, the share price is crazy low for this stock. The share price is not reflecting this, the stock. Should, should I be buying this stock? And I went from being up over 100% down. I was down on the position. I was down like 10, 20% on Card Factory at, at the time. And it was clear once again, you know, there's so many negative, I don't know what it is, but there's so many negative people out there. There's negative people that chase share prices. I think generally some people just enjoy being negative. I, I don't know what joy it brings them, but they do. Some people enjoy being negative. I don't know if they have such a terrible life that they have to just talk, uh, you know, negative things all the time because 
I, I don't know what's going on or something, but I remember like at this time people saying, oh, Card Factory is a terrible company. And I, at the time I could kind of see the point of view, you know, that it is a turnaround play, it is that heavy. I can understand why people have issues with Card Factory back in, back in 2020. But then in 2021, obviously the share price was starting to reflect to them positive things. And then, and then by 2022, it, it, it lost 50%. And I remember the time frame and there was people on the YouTube videos that were going back to videos that I posted on, you know, in May 2021. And, and they were just posting, you know, loads of negative comments like, oh, Card Factory is a trash stock. It's, you know, oh, you talked about Card Factory and it's down like 50% now. Oh, it's, you know, terrible. And there were people that just because the share price was down 50%, were in the comment section or whether you go on any forum page which you know talking trash about card factory because the share price was down but yet had no reflection on side of what's actually going on in the financials and then obviously you know we eventually as always you know if a company is doing well financially at some point it will be reflected on the share price and then obviously today we're at a point where card factory is getting that reflected on on the share price and I look at that time frame when in 2022 it went all the way back down to you know like 40p and I look at the people that used to be negative on on Card Factory at the time and obviously it's no surprise that all of a sudden they've deleted the comments and uh, unfortunately for them I think I've already got it. I got a, a couple of screenshots that I put in a previous video but uh, you know you look at the video at the time now and, and all, all the negativity is gone you know the neg negativity is gone people who are negative on the stock have suddenly deleted their, their comments and they it just shows you like this the people will just ch chase share prices because of what they're doing without actually looking at what's going on financially in the company or what will happen now is they rotate to a new company and go well actually now that stock's down 50 percent oh um s4 capital's now down there uh, 30 percent in last month that's now the trash stock and it's like well uh, it was a bit quiet a couple of months ago when uh, that stock was going back up again and that's what people do they, they, there's a lot of people out here that just talk about stocks in either a positive light because the share price is up or they're talking in a negative light because the share price is down and it's one of those that you know you have to say that you know the the company is not the stock price and the stock price is not the company the, the two different things here and it was only a matter of time when you look at card factories financials that there would just be a you know a bounce up on on the share price here so that's the first lesson anyway that i wanted to talk about um is is just around sentiment next thing let's say uh, Let's have a quick speak about Card Factory. So Card Factory itself um, is obviously doing very well for me. It's a stock that's up 150%. And another thing that I'm also factoring is that at the moment, potentially if a dividend does come back, I mean, I always thought about, is it time to sell this here? And I think like if they were to bring a dividend back and it's somewhere around the old dividend that they used to pay or close to some of the old dividend you used to pay. I mean, the old dividend is, you know, around 7% 7, 7 up to 10% yield in 2008. And then you're thinking about, uh, you know, my cost basis. I mean, realistically for me, I'm going to be picking up a 15% <laughs> dividend yield on this stock. And as much as I think about, is it time to sell Card Factory? I think, like, can I sell a stock that I'm going to get a 15% dividend yield off? Like, I'm, I'm going to, every year this stock's going to smash the S&P 500 for me just on dividends. So why would I want to sell that stock? And that's another thing as well, like, factoring in a lot of turnaround plays is, a lot of these companies as well uh, on dividend yields, if you get a really good average and they do bring the dividend yield back, you know, or dividend back, some of the stocks you get some of these dividend yields on is absolutely crazy. And I just, I don't know how I could probably sell this stock now just solely based on if they bring a dividend back going forward. Anyway, that's that's another story, uh, another lesson there. The company itself um, brought out a notice of results. So it turns out they were actually supposed to report. Uh, they were supposed to report today on the 25th of April. They said they had to knock it back to the 3rd of May. Now, they said that this was around one of the audit issues and that they asked for a little bit more time, obviously a week. Now, audit issues are always a little bit worrying. You know, when, when a company mentions audit issues, you're always like, oh, that's not good. Um, so the, the share price would have reacted a little bit negative on that they delayed it not normally. But the fact it's only seven days, I think, gives people a little bit of confidence. Okay, it's only seven days. It's not like a long period of time. That that wasn't great news, but it wasn't end of the world just because it was a, a week a week's delay. But what they did is, this is a really good sign of the management team, is they actually still put the financials down. And what they did is they put the financials down and to soften the blow, the, look at these numbers they put in. So the performance for the end of the year, 31st of January 2023. So they're expected to do EBITDA of at least 112 million, uh, which if you look at the moment, that's around about three times EBITDA, which is extremely cheap. And if you look at 
and that's at least been a keyword and profit for tax of at least 52 million so again i mean that's going to push them somewhere below 10 i mean it's 15 times earnings at the moment but that's going to push them somewhere probably around about 10 times earnings probably single digit times earnings so yeah it's again that's just crazy crazy low at the moment so you think like uh, you know, I talked before, one of the big things that can move stocks is not just profit and earnings, but metric expansion. And right now we're in a bear market, so metrics are really compressed. So you think about, okay, this is a company that is doing very well, growing profit, growing revenue, it's paying down its debt, could potentially come back with a healthy dividend, starts trading a bit more of a premium kind of company, you know, there's potentially, you know, a lot of room there as well going forward. Uh, and also that's at least, once again, uh, both of which are ahead of the expected outturn that was reported in the company's January 23 trading update. So this is a big thing, you know, you go, oh, that, not great thing there, but management go, okay, but look at these financials, uh, you know, really good amounts of profit ahead of expectations. And, you know, once again, that's what led, the market didn't only go, okay, we're actually okay with the audit issue then. We're actually gonna then send your stock up, you know, 14%, which was obviously really good. And they said they're also going to do a preliminary results webcast and capital market strategy update, uh, which is going to be held on the 3rd of May. And um, they're also going to say the long term targets f until financial, financial year 27, which I'll be looking at because I potentially will hold this stock to 2027. Uh, and also, I want to probably hear what the long term game plan is until that time frame as well. So I'll probably try ch check that one out anyway when that does happen. So, I mean, obviously if the company can start throwing off 40, 50 million in profit, that's gonna put the stock at very good levels of value. I mean, that would be, if you get to 50 million in profit, that'll be, you know, you're talking seven, eight times earnings. And then you look at the health of the balance sheet. You know, the balance sheet was the always issue with this company. And it's now paying the debt down massively. As you can see here, debt to equity is now down to 43 million. Uh, if we can put 40, 50 million cash uh, or profit and start paying that, you know, the debt down, get it around to, you know, 50 million debt, that'd be absolutely amazing. Talk about dividend coming back. And also, it's one of the things you want to be looking at is management team. What are management team doing? Are they, are they back in their own business? And you look at May time and August time, you know, you had uh, one of the members of the board who bought £19,000 worth of shares. The CEO that came in, Darcy Wilson, has obviously done a cracking job at the business. He was picking shares up at 61p. He put 56,000 of his own money into the business. That's obviously a really positive sign. And that's uh, you know one of the big things as well you want to be looking at is if a, a new CEO comes in and the CEO goes, you know what, I'm confident that we're going to turn this around here. I'm going to throw 56,000 uh, pounds worth of my own shares into this business. You know, that's a really, that's why we talk about insider buying, especially a CEO insider buying, that's a really big statement. And obviously for him, they bought these shares at 61p. Obviously for him, if we have a look quick, if we can find 61p now, I got about 60p on the 10th of June. So if you look at, you know, he's 83% up now as well. So obviously he's he's doing very well as well going forward. So yeah, I mean, obviously great update from Card Factory. I, I don't think I could sell just because the company's still doing absolutely fantastic and the potential of that dividend in the long term, I don't think I could sell and uh, the, the company's still on fire at the moment. So uh, that's where Card Factory's at anyway at the moment and uh, just a few lessons that are in there at the moment as well. Next one, Alibaba, I just wanted to mention a couple of Chinese stocks. Chinese stocks at the moment are getting absolutely tanks at the moment. I don't know if you noticed, but the, uh, at the start of the year, Chinese stocks did uh, really well. You know, they came onto the market um, the first kind of like month, two weeks. You know, a lot of Chinese stocks were up 30% and I thought Chinese stocks would uh, really start outperforming the market this year because a bit like what well, we just talked about Card Factory, the sentiment was so low in Chinese stocks. Like they were so low. The, the, there was a lockdown situation, the earnings being, uh, you know, compressed quite a bit. And you looked at the reopening in China coming back up and thinking, okay, a lot of these stocks are going to start kicking on now. And it was starting to be reflected in the share price. And then all of a sudden we've given, basically, we're actually down 5% for the year. And once again, you're looking at a lot of these Chinese stocks. And Alibaba came out with the, uh, the news as well about the potential split up of the company as well coming up. You know, and, and, and the market really loved it. You can see the bump up here. And once again, you know, since then it's given all of the gains back away from the potential split up from the stock. And it's one of those that you're looking at the Chinese stocks at the moment. And I know that individually or the potential like, you know, ADR, potentially risk with them or what have you that people talk about. You know, you, you, you are generally looking at some of these stocks thinking there's some general big opportunities in this sort of space. Even if you think 
when you talk about Chinese stocks and you think, okay, they're going to trade at lower valuations because of the ADR risk or the political risk. Even when you look at the lower valuations, you're looking at thinking the levels that some of these stocks are at with the turnaround and the economy potentially moving back into a good direction in China just doesn't make sense. And it's uh, it's unbelievable some of the, the, the share prices that are starting to come down in uh, the Chinese stocks at the moment. Where, so I see a bit of opportunity there once again. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. And last one is Disney. I don't know if you saw this, but Disney is cutting thousands of jobs in second wave of layoffs. So obviously Bob Iger came back and uh, one of the big things that he did to get the market trying to love Disney stock again was efficiencies and dividend. And obviously to pay dividend, you, you know, you need to be making good amounts of profit, which um, obviously that that's what one of the big things he focused on and the market's focused on profitability right now. So uh, that's why um, Bob Iger came back. So he, he could save them sort of uh, things for the market to try and get Disney back into a, a, a more loved situation. And also, um, you know, focus on the profitability. So here they said that they potentially could um, eliminate 7,000 positions and save 5.5 billion in costs. Now I was looking at Disney and um, at the moment, obviously around about 3 billion in profit puts Disney at a, a little bit of a richer valuation. But the ultimate question is, can Disney, now that it's got Disney Plus, go back to higher levels of revenue that it was ever doing before the CV situation and also grow faster, which, you know, Disney really didn't grow before Disney Plus and hopefully Disney Plus keeps, um, you know, Disney, Disney growing a bit more than what it has done previously, as you can see here. But the other thing is, as well as having the Disney Plus platform and offering the company growth, can they get back to the old levels of profitability where, you know, they used to sit around eight, nine, 10 billion in, in profitability. And when you factor in, if they get to them sort of levels, then it looks a pretty value, pretty good valuation because what you have now is you have good amounts of profitability and then you also have Disney growing at a lot faster rates than what it ever has done previously because of the, the Disney Plus side of it. And that's the uh, the ultimate challenge really for Disney to to get to them sort of levels if it can do. And if you look here, um, you know, by the end of this year, we're talking, you know, five billion in profit. And then by the end of, 2024 and they're then forecasting you know 8.3 billion in profitability so we'll see if they're able to do it and obviously one of the big things that will drive profitability at the moment is obviously the, the focus on getting disney plus profit pro profitable but without doubt you know if they are you know potentially saving up to 5.5 billion in cost this path to profitability will, will very quickly come reality if they are more efficient than what analysts are expecting now so well, that's the one key thing to be looking at is if these costs are going to be saving billions of pounds, do Disney get to them all levels of profitability a little bit quicker than what we were thinking or what analysts were thinking as well. And that could be a, a key driver for the company as well. So, so that's something to keep on uh, an eye on and especially when Disney do come and report their financials to see if uh, that's been achieved and that if it is being achieved, the analysts will, will really like that because they'll be thinking, we're growing faster, they're profitable, and uh, obviously if they bring the dividend back, that might bring some of the old shareholder base back into the business as well. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video anyway. Those are uh, just a few things to talk about as always, and uh, yeah, if you could smash that like button, that's absolutely amazing, and catch you all in a bit.